But you don't even think that that just happened. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the ballroom. We'd like to remind you that there is no smoking in the theater. And, ladies and gentlemen, if you must leave the room during the performance, please use the rear doors for exit and entry and not the side doors. Thank you. And now, welcome to an evening with the legendary Hollywood ladies, all talking, all singing, all dancing, all dead. light and frothy. Oh, triple bourbon on the rocks with a black widow spider walking the ice. When I go butch, darlings, I go butch. Thank you. That's butch with an E. Thank you. Oh, Michael Biagi, darling, Michael Biagi, my musical director, darling. Thank you. Oh, and it was cold. We've got to get warm. Thank you, darling. Well, my drink, of course. Thank you. I think I'll just run this through the kidneys and see what color it comes out. <laughs> you know, it's so divine. Michael, Michael belongs to Big Brothers. Every Sunday, a 90-year-old man comes by his house and takes him to the movies. <laughs> Not a really hysterical opening line, but... <laughs> After all, darling, we haven't done this act since the Titanic. Actually, it was your grandfather, I'll have to admit that, darling. It was on the Titanic. I remember, darling, everyone was going down. <laughs> and, and some people were drowning. That's his one line in the show. <laughs> I hope! Get me out of the darling, thank you. I'm going to keep this on. My arm is cold. <laughs> yes, darling, it was the Titanic. I remember, don't you remember the last words of the captain of the Titanic? Oh, let's have a party. Stop for ice. <laughs> I was there in the salon. I decided to sing a Cole Porter song and dared, literally dared, to change Cole's lyrics, which upset that old queen no end. She jumped overboard grabbed a sailor before she did it, and uh, they swam to shore and lived happily ever after on Fire Island. Doesn't everyone? The, uh, 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 sorry, dog. Must be 28th Street Road. So. The night is young. The skies are gray. Now, you tell me, you've gone gay. That's delightful, it's delicious, it's lovely. I understand the reason why you wear a dress, but then so do I. That's delightful, it's delicious, it's lovely. I can tell at a glance what a swell night this 
is for Robert and Tiger Deer. All my producers murmuring low. For Christ's sake, Tallulah, start the show. So here's to us, one and all. Stick with me, darlings, we'll have a ball. I'm delightful, I'm delicious, I'm delectable, I'm delirious, I'm dyslexic. <laughs> dyslexic? Isn't that a disco on Lexington Avenue that I've missed? <laughs> I'm a camp. I'm a Tallulah. Ah, you're not applauding, darling. Oh, you're doing it with your eyeballs, of course. Always glad to get the opening number over with. Ah, what's that? Oh, it's my coat. Thank you, darling. Oh, please have mercy on us. File that, darling. Give it back to Doris Day. Tell her the pelt's real. That'll bug the virginity right back into her. Thank you, darling. Here we are. Oh, you know, the last time that I sang in public was in St. Patrick's Cathedral. <laughs> 2,000 people changed religion, and Cardinal Spellman had a sex change and went to work as a stripper in Jersey City. Oh, good old friend, how we miss him on 3rd Avenue. <laughs> I think I'll have a cigarette on that one. Thank you, guys. Oh, goodbye. Thank you, all. Thank you! You know, darling, to get to the ballroom tonight, which... The ballroom, darling. I've always thought this was a marvelous name for men's underwear. The, slow, uh, the show doesn't get any even faster. It doesn't get any slower. <laughs> Maybe I'm speaking too fast myself. Ballroom has the monitors. But anyway, what happened, darling, was this. You would think that the ballroom would send a limo for me. Wrong. A radio dispatched cab. Wrong. I got a bicycle. Wrong. I ended up tonight driving in in a small car with a sign on the top that said, Domino's Pizza Delivered. <laughs> Jesus, that guy came to a screeching halt. I ended up with a pizza in my mouth. I look like a Ubangi drag queen. <laughs> Have you ever seen a Ubangi drag queen on 28th Street? Ah, sing around, darling. Old drag queens never die. They just apply more makeup. <laughs> look at Virginia Graham. <laughs> You know, oh, I need air. Anyway. That's right, darling, I need air. Ever been this close to an open grave before? <laughs> anyway, darling, you see, I do not have children of my own, thank God in my diaphragm. But I do have friends that have children. You know, and I visit them from time to time. And they say, oh, please, please, Uncle Tallulah, and Tallulah, I'm sorry. Won't you tell us bedtime stories? And I'm all right, darling, get into your Dr. Denton's. And they get into their little Dr. Denton's. And I tell them my Tallulah stories. Like the time a man came in my dressing room and said, Tallulah, Tallulah, I must have you for my wife. I said, really? Is she pretty? <laughs> You do know who I am, don't you? I mean, there's no sign that says Tallulah Banquet. I am Tallulah Banquet. My family, you see, not only were the theater, but we were in politics. My great-grandfather, Senator Cornhole Banquet, was so divine, drank a quart of scotch every day of his life. Day died, we had to take a stick and beat his liver to death. Oh. You have a laugh recording back there you can put on. <laughs> Jesus H. Christ, we need it tonight, I'll tell you that. If I were alive today, I might be President Tallulah Bankhead. Then you'd have a real Bush in the White House. <laughs> a 
And what does Barbara Bush do with her old clothes? She wears them. <laughs> Salvation Army sees her, got their clothes up shop and move location. <laughs> but now back to my Tallulah stories, which I was beguiling you with. <laughs> I was rehearsing a Broadway play with an ingenue using the phony... You do understand the word ingenue, do you not? I was rehearsing with an ingenue using the phoniest British accent that I'd ever heard. She was pleading with me in some scene. Oh, mother. Oh, mother, you can't. Oh, mother, you can't. Mother, you can't. I turned to the director. I said, what is this little bitch calling me anyway? <laughs> he said, that's what she's calling you. A mother. I was in a Hollywood party one time with Marilyn Monroe, who came up to me and said, Oh, Miss Banker, I still have my cherry. I said, Really? Doesn't it get in your way when you fuck? She said, No. I said, Thank God you had your tonsils out. Somebody laughed and broke our mood. I'm over here, Wendy, now that it matters anymore. I have to be very careful getting off the stage. That stool went that way last night, and I went that way. I ended up hitting the stage like a meadow muffin with a tall cow's ass. I was ending that off. Oh, I could just get my hands on Kathleen Turner. I really would. She tried to imitate my hairstyle. That play she's in, what's it called? Pussy on a cold steel slab. That's it. <laughs> or is this to is this to Anne Margaret on her motorcycle? <laughs> Could be anything going, I don't know. <clears throat> well, my darlings, you all have heard of Broadway Baby. I was called Times Square to Lula. My regards to Broadway. Remember me to the Herald Square. Tell all the gangs I'm 47th Street, but I will soon be there. Have me my green beret. I'm going to clean up that place. I wish that you little kiddies could have known New York as I knew New York as it was so many years ago. So many wonderful years. Every theater had a star. The Luns, Catherine Cornell, myself, of course. Helen Hayes, that professional virgin. <laughs> Every theater had footlights and flushed up. It would look divine. Ethel Barrymore would look like Lionel Barrymore, like that. <laughs> I always thought she was, anyway. I never saw them together. <laughs> Curtain time at 8.40. Oh, yes, lovely, civilized time for the theater. Oh! 8.40. And then after the theater, we'd have a late night supper at the plaza. Oh, the Algonquin. Everyone was there. The Dyke and Duchess, the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. No coward holding court. Just the queen to do it, too. <laughs> Greta Garbo, alone at a table, with a slouch hat and her sandals. She just come in from the park, peeing on the pigeons. <laughs> Eleanor Roosevelt and Loreen Hickok at a table for two. <laughs> Eleanor called her Wild Bill for obvious reasons. <laughs> but you know the story, darlings. Loreen had said to Eleanor, I must see the inside of a natural monument. <laughs> so, Eleanor let her. <laughs> Outside the window, the Trap family singers. Oh, yes, darling, every one of those little bastards sitting off key. Chattanooga Choo Choo sounded like Silent Night. <laughs> Silent Night sounded like Take It Off the E String, Play It On the G String. But anyway, that's true. Of course, darling, by now, my little tiny tots had fallen fast asleep. I'd bored the shit out of them, too. <laughs> 
And as I tiptoed out of the room, I turned and I thought, oh, please, come on Please, my little precious ones, one of you grow up and please be a hairstylist. <laughs> or do impressions of Tanula Bank and may I say that he never <laughs> So give my regards to old Broadway. And this is just the broad who knew the way. <laughs> and tell them I'll be there. Why do you hear? Hit it, Buster! Lord! Who needs laying tea prize, Lord? three at a time. <laughs> I'm still wearing Tallulah's shoes. <laughs> you know, that Tallulah Bankhead dame, you know, she's got a good act, but I mean, she needs more zingers. She needs more one-liners. <laughs> like, how did 500 Mexicans get to the Alamo in two cars? <laughs> Helen Keller was married and no one ever told her. It's <laughs> real sharp, Rick Taylor type line. <laughs> Advertise uh, Donald Trump's new breakfast cereal. You ain't getting nothing, honey. <laughs> Glad you like that. <laughs> Rest of my routine, I can't remember. 
Must be like sex with a boomerang. It'll come back to me. I have Alzheimer's disease. That's fear of forgetting the punchline. <laughs> Now you've all heard of Clint Eastwood. Well, I'm Mae West, and you know I would, <laughs> if I could. I haven't had sex in so long. How long? I'm glad somebody came to life. <laughs> how long? Give me a roll, I'll tell you how long. Make it big. How long has it been? Oh, well, if my gynecologist had planted a lump of coal, it would be a diamond in the morning. Men are like diamonds, never too big or too hard. You know what I mean? Those trousers are tight, I can see your religion. He's a Christian scientist, he thinks it's big. Keep thinking, honey, keep thinking. Find a man as butch as Sergoni Weaver, I'd marry. Uh, she rolls her own tampon. Never seen anyone jumpstart a dildo. She was starting a lawnmower. A dildo. That's a pickled deer. <laughs> Let's take a ten minute break. You figure that one out, I'll be back. Along with the odd timers line. That's right. I don't have a lover, just going to bed with myself is hard enough. I feel like my gay 90s medley coming out now. I went to a gay 90s party last night. All the men were gay and all the women were 90. <laughs> there should be a carrot on the end of that leading me somewhere. I want to say hello. I want to see you smile. I want to hold you in my arms again. I want to do the little things that we have done before. Oh, honey, I can't live without you anymore. I won't be satisfied till you're by my side. Wine chill, hold you in my arms again. Wanna turn the bed down? Hold you in my arms again. Oh, I forgot it's a medley. Monday night, I slept alone. Tedious. Tuesday night, you didn't phone. That's Barbara Stanwyck calling from sorry wrong number. Forget <laughs> Wednesday night, you took your dope. right now. I ate a pharmacist earlier today. <laughs> Tried smoking pot. The handle caught in my throat. <laughs> Stop that. Every time I go past a fire hydrant, that side goes up. <laughs> Got this at an MGM auction. Used to be Lassie's tail. <laughs> Return to Ronnie McDowell. <laughs> I'm baby Jane Hudson. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong routine. <laughs> I'm the queen of innuendo. 
innuendo, that's Italian for preparation age. <laughs> <laughs> Sex is a misdemeanor. The more you miss, demeanor you get. The difference between O and R. Four inches. <laughs> Make that seven. The difference between sensual and kinky. Mm. Oh. Sensual, that's with the tip of the feather. Kinky, with the whole chicken. I'm never going to the Colonel's again. Why not? My breast of chicken had a nipple on it. Never, never, never. The difference between a lady and a slut. Four drinks. <laughs> She's on her third. <laughs> so true. Oh, let's do another one of those da 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 I love those. I was looking out of my bedroom window today. Mmm, my chauffeur Pedro was doing my car. I said, Pedro, stop polishing. Come up to my bedroom. Pedro came to my bedroom. I said, take off my dress. Pedro took off my dress. I said, now my garters and my hose. He took off my garters and my hose. I said, now my panties and my bra. And he took off my panties and my bra. Mm. Oh. Mm. I said, the next time I catch you wearing my clothes, you're fired. <laughs> Vegas a few weeks ago. I went up to the gambling tables and there was a tall, dark, and hungsome, uh, handsome croupier. He said, Miss West, I'd love to lay a ten to one. Well, I said, that's kind of an odd time, but I'll be there. <laughs> I woke up in a cow pasture outside of town. There was a bull chasing me. Well, I was tired, so I ran. <laughs> Lickety split. <laughs> I made it to a fence. I jumped over. There was an old farmer who said, Hey there, Miss West, what's the matter? Can't you take it? Well, I said, Of course I can take it, but what would I do with a cab and a three room apartment? <laughs> I have trouble enough tending to my seagulls, please. Cabs and seagulls, they just don't work. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing up here. I'm dead. <laughs> the thing about being dead is you don't get junk mail. <laughs> I checked into heaven with a gorgeous sailor and a beautiful marine. St. Peter said, now listen here, you three. Think dirty thoughts up here in heaven. Your wings will crumble and fall off. I checked that out, of course. <laughs> I walked past the sailor and his wings crumbled and fell off. As he bent over to pick them up, the Marine's wings crumbled. <laughs> I was at the wrong gate. <laughs> Who killed you, Marge? I was 14 before I learned French was a language. I was tongue-tied up to them. I was very poor when I was a child. I had to run naked around the house till I was 14, then mother bought me a hat so I could look out the window. <laughs> Do another one of those. Wait, I've got another one. See, I worked here in New York many years ago in a men's clothing store on Madison Avenue. Good looking guy came in one day and said, Miss West, I'd like to see your ass card in the window. <laughs> even did in the line yet. <laughs> I'd like to see your ascot in the window. <laughs> well, the customer is always right. <laughs> it's hardly worth it. It was hardly worth it. I want to tell you what goes on up there in my home sweet heaven. Oh, I think you like it. I'm going, keep thinking, keep thinking. You've forgotten our routine already. Keep thinking. That's the one. It's very festive with all male choirs, and we have 
fantasies to fill your heart's desires. Betty smokes there. Jack Betty jokes there. In my home sweet heaven. Rochester, what's this costing? My house is lavish. It's by Bernini, oh. And I've a feeling that the ceiling's by Cellini. The brothers Adam, oh, they call me madam. In my home sweet heaven, your lover. After I've lunched on Keats and Shelley, pose for Botticelli, Valentino asks me out to dine. And it'll really bowl you over, watching Casanova try to put the make on Gertrude Stein. <laughs> Didn't work, she went back to Marie Antoinette. <laughs> I'm the only queen of history that lost her head over a basket. <laughs> Delilah's dreary, but Samson's handsome. And with his good looks, Robin Hood looks fit for ransom. When I get roses from dear old Moses, May's in seventh heaven. Oh, honey, I'm in eleventh heaven. I miss the love of laughter rippling and the tippling. Making eyes at Kipling. I'm homesick for my home sweet. They didn't want me up there, you know. They said I'd eat up all the profits. <laughs> Wait for it. I'm homesick for my home sweet. See me up and come sometime. I'm the head angel. Wait for <laughs> With dirty knees. I'm homesick for my home sweet heaven. Oh, there you are. Just a heavenly busybody winging it tonight. Oh. special request their own we bring you the phantom of the turban ladies oh miss scarlet i am scared <laughs> courage prissy courage who are the turban ladies who really cares <laughs> B-movie actresses that wore turbans because their hairstylists had gotten rather testy and said things like, oh girl, do it yourself, get real, I'm going to the beach. <laughs> Neurotic, exotic, ladies of the silver screen that wore turbans. Turban Lady. Well, they're coming, don't worry. The car was late.
Am I overdressed for the subway? <laughs> I am a vigilante, you know. <laughs> Maybe shopping at Dagostino's. A Dragostino, sorry. <laughs> Midnight, Saturday night, when the Art Deco people come on. <laughs> We've no other place to go. They torn down all of our movie palaces. In New York, it was the Roxy, the Paramount. In San Francisco, the Fox. And next, it'll be Grauman's Chinese Theater in Hollywood. I never saw a Chinese in the place. <laughs> of course, now it's called Man's Chinese Theater. Never saw a man in the place either. <laughs> Lived in the back row for years. Saw Maureen O'Hara. She was back there with a the sailor. Never mind. But I you know I saw a movie for 25 cents. So I go way back. There were 25 cent people. Yes. Actually, there were two of me on the ark. I was the one with the beads. A movie for 25 cents. That's when movies were movies. Need to relax. Need to escape. Go see Faye Ray in the palm of an ape. Watch Errol Flynn shoot off. Please, I can't go on. I can't. I'm feeling too Ema Sumac right now. I was with her, you know, when she went into her ninth octave. Oh, it was horrible. Just horrible. Blew the top of her mouth right on. Her porcelain veneer shot into outer space. Dentist screamed, it's another Milky Way. Who here? Who here? Who here? Who here? Oh. Oh. Who here remembers some of those B movie actresses like Maria Montez? <laughs> that accounts for the five iron lungs parked outside my house. <laughs> Whoever remembered any of those people I was singing about is either a great movie buff. An outpatient at Bellevue. <laughs> or Liz Smith. <laughs> Maria Montez. She always wore shoulder pads or way back like this one here. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I could do hunchback of Notre Dame. <laughs> Quasimodo, that face rings a bell. <laughs> Maria Montez. You will give me the Cobra Jewel. I want the Cobra Jewel. You don't have the Cobra Jewel? Ooh, oy vey. Get cocky of y'all. You will go, you will look for the most beautiful girl on the island. She's my twin. Kill him. Yeah, that Maria. She belonged to the Desi Arnaz School of Language. That one, she'd sing when she went, when she really felt in the mood. Brazil's, they're only second born and seers. They make your tits stick out like Spears. Ah. <laughs> Heavens, it used to be a class act. It's gross. <laughs> you know what gross is. Kissing your grandmother goodnight and she gives you the tongue. That's gross. <laughs> Biting into a Big Mac and finding a vein. That's gross. <laughs> We've gone too far. The other Maria. A 
Maria Uzbenskaya. By the time you've said it, you've cleaned your teeth. The gypsy lady in every B movie ever made. She wore authentic Naga Hyde outfits. A lot of keys that hung down and down. Keys that opened nothing. She was a sick old crone. She lived with Wanda Lindowska, but they couldn't get their names on the mailbox. They had to split up for a In every picture, you see, you enjoy that. Did you know Wanda? In every picture, Maria Uspenskaya could be seen walking Borgo past. Don't ask me, I don't know where it is. It's, it's, it's in the Catskills somewhere. She could be seen walking Borgo past with a microphone stand. Because she was too cheap to buy a stick. We're talking major frugal. But we're talking Maria Uspenskaya. You are strange, my son, through no fault of your own. When the moon is full, when the vulpine is in bloom, you will change. You will become her. She will become you. And no one will know the difference. Good luck. She's on her fourth. <laughs> then she had the ball as she sang. Her voice to paint all cars blocks away. There's a story that the gypsies love to hear. Oh, yeah. That if your love wears gold of the earrings, oh, yeah. They took her away, fast, as I speak to you in drag. I mean, as I speak to you tonight, or you didn't know. As I speak to you tonight, she is in hiatus port with Rose Kennedy. She is, that woman still lives. Fantastic what money can do. I wish you would buy me a new turban to fit. That's what I like to do. I really do. The greatest turban wearer of them all. Gloria Swanson is Norma Desmond in Sunset Boulevard. Greatest star of them all. You know what a star is, don't you? A big ball of gas. Me, me, Norma Desmond. They accuse me of killing my lover Joe. I didn't kill him, I shot him. He fell into my swimming pool and drowned, but I didn't kill him. Tough titty. Back with you to make the sequel to Sunset Boulevard. It's going to be called The Return to Sunset Bowl. It's going to be in 3D. But I can reach out from the dark of a motion picture screen and touch my fan sitting out there in the dark. Do you have any popcorn for me? A hostess Twinkie? You were a Twinkie, I see. been this close to anyone with so much makeup before? <laughs> I'm wearing makeup on my tongue. I'm wearing Max Factor pan stick, medium cool on my uvula. I can't get up.
We're here forever. I could use a fifth grade. An Eskimo pie. I was in love with an Eskimo once. It was cold, we had to break it off. I put it in the hands of my lawyer. He said it wouldn't stand up in court. But it did. Now the bell, I made it stand up in court. Come share. <laughs> Mr. DeVille, I'm ready for my close-up. Don't bring the cameras too close up. You'll be ill, Mr. DeVille. A wrinkle here, a wrinkle there. I seldom have ever smiled. My skin is loose. <laughs> to tell the truth, it stretches, or am I? I'm ready for my facelift, Mr. DeVille. My fans demand I look my best, even when I kill. My mansion's gloomy, very tomb me. I worked all day on that line. Lovely. Thank you. People never see my elbows, you know. Oh, sorry. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeVille. But that part of me that's never wrinkled. My teeth. Now that's when movies were movies. <laughs> Girls in some homes. Monsters in caves. See Scarlet make a dress out of that wall. White light can be grand from the third row. Every day I pray for another fucking tornado. Get me the hell out of Kansas! Just go to a marvelous movie and smile. Giggle, chortle, tee hee. Get me my popcorn and red whips. That's all, folks. from Miss Davis. Our first one this evening will be from Stolen Life, Dead Ringer. Daddy died a wino, you know. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our whimsical tribute to Miss Betty Davis.
unfasten your garter belts. It's going to be a happy night. <laughs> I've never been quite so relaxed. <laughs> I took a Valium. <laughs> Forty years ago. Huge Valium. <laughs> when they called me to come back, it was Radio City Music Hall to be in the Easter pageant. They said they would roll the rock back. There you'll be. I said no. No! Let an impersonator do it. <laughs> then Joe Pat called. Sounds like a test, doesn't it? <laughs> to be in Lady Macbeth, a new production. No Macbeth, just Lady Macbeth. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Till I read the stage directions. Lady Macbeth enters with candle upper center. <laughs> no way. Let an impersonator do it. Then the ball caught. If you don't do a show, an impersonator will. Nicky Lee's been working on an imitation of you for a year. <laughs> Anyone's going to do me, it's going to be myself. <laughs> you don't think I can do <laughs> Everybody tries to imitate me. That aggravates me. Is fair. <laughs> People think they actually can do me. But if they knew me, they wouldn't dare. <laughs> All that Peter, Peter, Peter is a fright. Let me try to show you how to do me right. I've seen him 
the letter. Herbert Marshall, my husband, hated me. I was always putting my cigarettes out on his wooden leg. <laughs> give me the letter. The letter, Peter. If you can't give me the letter, give me a stamp! <laughs> give me something to lick up. <laughs> With all my heart, I still love the man I killed. Kilt, K-I-L-T-E-D, Kilt. You've got to cry like Betty. Ooh, you've got to twitch like Betty. You've got to act like Margo, Rosa or Jane. Play a bitch like Betty. Bitch, bitch, bitch. You've got to learn a scene from every Davis flick. You take your pick. Walk like Betty, cry like Betty, talk like Betty, laugh like Betty, twitch like Betty, play the rotten bitch. That's me! Barbara Lawrence. <laughs> Stout. A 
stolid who could kick her legs higher and wider than anyone in town. <laughs> she could work sunset and vine all four corners at one time. <laughs> How nice for Bob. <laughs> I'm picked up by the cops, <laughs> given a breathalyzer test that sends the balloon around the world. <laughs> Put in jail. But the next morning, like all good Hollywood pictures, I'm out and working in the lingerie department of the main company. Cleaning, <laughs> running around. Very unusual lingerie counter. Very wide lingerie counter. Counter looks like a piano, doesn't it? <laughs> Return to Marla Maples. Ah! <laughs> Her 15 minutes is up. <laughs> I'm discovered by two little old biddies from Pasadena who recognize me, of course. Madge, look. Oh, that's Margaret Elliot. Why, she looks older than dirt. <laughs> oh, I think it's a disgrace. A store like the main company employing a jailbird like her. I wouldn't buy a girdle in her lingerie department. <laughs> and I heard them. <laughs> speech that I'm about to do. All about Eve. I remember the scene. I'm parked car on a lonely road in Connecticut. <laughs> With Celestial Home. <laughs> oh, Celestial Home, sorry. Sounds like a retirement village advertised by Red Buttons. <laughs> she was Karen. Karen had drained the gas tank. So I would be late arriving at the theatre. And my understudy, Eve, would go on. I can't tell you how she drained the gas tank, but her breast smelled lonely. <laughs> there we were in the middle of nowhere. I lowered the lights on the dashboard. I have a very large dashboard. Oh, sorry, Karen. <laughs> I've never dialed a tip before. <laughs> Lower the lights on the dashboard. Thank you. 
I always travel with a spotlight outside the car. <laughs> and a pianist in the backseat. <laughs> That's Connecticut Rich. <laughs> Karen and I left her outside the car. Oh, sorry. I remember I turned to Karen and I said, Funny business of woman's career. The things you drop on your way up the ladder so you can move faster. And you forget you don't need them again. And you get back to being a woman. And one thing all females have in common is being a woman. Sooner or later, we're going to have to work at it. Whether we like it or not, no matter how many other careers we've had, all wanted. And in the last analysis, nothing matters. Unless you can look up just before dinner, or turn around in bed, and there he is. Without that, you're not a woman. You're something with a French provincial office or a book full of clippings, I'm sure. Not a woman. A slow curtain. The end. Channel 2 every day at 5. <laughs> or as a 
watching Channel 5 every day. <laughs> Better than watching a Joe Franken reprint all day. <laughs> <laughs> An outside line. <laughs> Johnson's Liquors, Baby Jade Hudson here. Yeah, I want to order some liquor. <laughs> what do you mean I can't? <laughs> My sister did? Said I couldn't have any? <laughs> well, I'll call her. I'll, I'll put her on. She'll order for me. Yeah, I mean, she, she's upstairs, you know. She, uh, she's not fit to receive visitors. <laughs> I'll call her. Blanche! <laughs> Here she comes now, without the chair. <laughs> Awful scene. Blanche, tell the man from Johnson's I want some liquor. Blanche Hudson with one earring. <laughs> I think there's been some slight error. <laughs> Mistake. <laughs> After all, I didn't mean to imply you couldn't fill my sister's orders. After all, we do pay our bills. <clears throat> I'll put her back on. on first, before I order anything. You're there? Oh, good. Jottons! Four quarts of Bombay gin. Eight gallons of absolute vodka. And a quart of Gatorade. I get very thirsty when I drink. Someone's on this line. Blanche, are you on this line? Oh, no. Oh, no, I'm Bob Astaire. Sorry, Bob, no. Where the man is downstairs? Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm an invalid. I'm a Briton and I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I simply can't stand it. My lips are cut and my teeth are going to be killed. No, 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 no. No, no! no. Barbara! Get off the line. I'm ordering some booze. Oh, no. I don't know what to do. I've been chewing up a secret. There's no one here to enjoy it. I can't stand it. I simply can't stand it. No, no. Barbara! Relax! Dial 900 H-U-N-G. Do it now. <laughs> Johnson, send that over. Bond and messenger. Yeah, I gotta go. Here comes Blanche. Blanche! Here she comes. <laughs> Jane, who was that on the phone? <laughs> oh, just that high-strung Barbara Stanwyck. The man's coming to kill her. Big deal. Good riddance! You wouldn't talk about Barbara that way if she wasn't an invalid in bed. <laughs> but she is black. <laughs> she is an invalid in bed. <laughs> up our ending, haven't you? <laughs> Not really. Nothing can destroy that ending. There's your tintin. It's a parakeet TV tintin. I based it in it. Pepsi! Eat it! Oh, but Jane, that's a tongue sandwich. I never eat anything out of an animal's mouth. <laughs> Like some eggs. <laughs> no farmers in the house. <laughs> hey, Blanche, remember the time I was real good to you? And I took you and your wheelchair to San Francisco, to a high hill and gave you a big push. <laughs> your spike jog and teddies digging in the concrete. Remember? <laughs> remember what happened next? A seagull flew right overhead and did doo-doo all over you. She looked like four feet of Italian wedding cake. Oh, I remember, Jane, I said, run, get the toilet paper. I said, what are you talking about? By the time I got back, that bird's ass would be halfway across the Pacific. <laughs> Looking for sympathy, Blanche, you can find it right in the dictionary. <laughs>
It's between shit and suicide. And I wish to have you do one or the other. You wouldn't treat me this way if I wasn't a cripple in a wheelchair. <laughs> It's true. It's your 
cereal off of a satellite dish. It's true. <laughs> she was standing on a corner in Beverly Hills. The cops drove by and told her to break it up. <laughs> Oh, you know, we never got to. Joan Collins, darling. Now that this, now that this is over with. I, uh, I have my own television commercial for Joan Collins Passionate Passion Prophylactics. <laughs> but yes, darling, you love them. Don't be half safe. Be cocksure. <laughs> when sex rears its ugly head, put a rubber on it. And remember, darlings, we put a quarter in each package. So if you can't come, call. <laughs> you guys are lucky, you know, you have your own homes around here. I'm on a tour de force. I was forced to tour, you know. And uh, late night movies in all of these cities have gotten, well, there are, there are no late night movies. I go home and I'm faced with a selection. Either Kojak, Joe Franklin, or a rerun of the Frugal Gourmet, you know. So I'm stuck with the commercials. My Jane, you're walking so bow-legged, what is it? Now we ran out of Vaseline last night and had to use Imperial Margarine. <laughs> I've got this crown between my legs. <laughs> but that girl didn't know the difference between Vaseline or putty. One day, all her windows fell out. <laughs> I've got one going. I don't think you'll have You'll call and never, ever see it except here and now. Because the Queen of England would never do a television. Play the 
like a receptive mood, ladies and gentlemen. Let's say a wonderful ballroom welcome to that delightful comedian and actress, my dear friend, the one and only Dorothy Loudon. Ago, Shirley and Dick and Dorothy were at the recording. Tonight, Bradshaw Smith has been videotaping the show for documentary purposes, my own. Don't have to worry about being seen or anything, darling. Just for me. And we're all together again. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you. Did I, did I wear this week then? <laughs> I am Mildred Pierce, and I do bake tapas pies during the day. <laughs> Our show tomorrow night will be different, and if you believe that, you believe Chorus Line will close. <laughs> that Yugoslavia has sailors. <laughs> that Betty Furness knows everything. <laughs> oh, my God. That your next taxi driver will speak English. <laughs> And that Joe Collins did say, ouch, on her wedding night. <laughs> That's right, the famous last words of Betty Furness. Oh, I need a new hairstyle. No. <laughs> the last words of Isadora Duncan. <laughs> and her sister, who said, girl, wear the green scarf. It'll bring out your eyes. <laughs> Of Marie Antoinette. Okay, fellas, knock it off. <laughs> Wherever you go, whatever you do, remember. I'm one of the girls who's one of the boys, cracking my jokes in the smoke and the noise. Hey, I could be Manny, I could be them, might even be Barbie. Then go home and bake lies Beneath all the rhinestones, sequins and pearls I'm one of the boys who's really one of the girls Good night, ladies and gentlemen
Thank you very much. Thank you.